make some pie dough. We've got all of our ingredients now. Uh, a lot of people wonder about the margarine. A lot of times you see formulas these days have butter in them, and that's great. I love butter and pie dough, but it's expensive, you know, and I don't know that you're getting your biggest bang for your buck in that. And when I say expensive, I'm talking about three and a half a pound for butter versus about, um, I don't know, 60 cents, 80 cents a pound for margarine. So that's pretty substantial when you get right down to it. Um, now we're going to spread that money across uh, a couple of different pies, but still, you got to save money where you can. The nice thing about margarine is that it's kind of waxy, so that it holds its shape. Very reminiscent of lard in that way. Lard makes an excellent pie dough, but it's all that cholesterol and saturated fat that becomes the problem. Otherwise, it's got kind of that meaty flavor that everybody likes. You know, back in the old days, that's what they used to make pie dough. Nowadays, we kind of shy away from it because of that. I think probably in the artisan world, we're going to see a little bit more of that. You'll be getting people who will render their own lard and then use that to make their pie dough. And I think that's nice, but it's never going to not be full of cholesterol and saturated fat. So we're going to start off, actually I'm going to start off with my dry. And remember when I talk about getting this, and uh, uh, well actually, you guys aren't my lecture, so uh, when I'm mixing these in, I don't like to put them in as a dry ingredient because this little bit of salt how do I know where that goes and all of that dry? I really have you know, no control over that. I can sift it, I can mix it, I can blend it. But if I wanted to control that to make sure I get all that flavor, I would liquefy it, which is what I do with my salt, my sugar, and my milk powder. Now a word about this milk powder, there are two different types. There's spray process and there's freeze dried. This is freeze dried and you can tell because it's kind of chunky and um, gritty. Uh, and, and spray process is not, it's very, very fine. That you could sip into your dry, but since this is not, we're gonna go ahead and put that in the water. Now we're really close to the saturation point of this water, in other words, to the point where it will not accept any more ingredient. So it's gonna take some doing. You wanna go ahead and get that stirred together and then let that sit to allow that water or that salt and sugar to dissolve in there and then that'll be more evenly incorporated throughout. Um, you're seeing a lot more people using alcohol in their pie dough as well. Vodka is used because it doesn't really carry any residual flavor to speak of, but it also doesn't develop gluten. So you'll get the, the wet texture of the dough, but it won't be glutinous because alcohol doesn't develop gluten. I'm not a big fan of using all alcohol, but a small amount of alcohol, like half to a quarter of the uh, liquid is alcohol, might not be a bad idea. You want some gluten because that's what gives structure. And that structure is what keeps that piece of pie together so that all eight pieces of pie out of this pie we're about to make get on the plate. And that's what I'm after. All right, I'm gonna let that sit. And now I'm gonna cut my fat into my flour. You cut it up like this, somebody's helped me out. Chopped it up a little bit. You don't absolutely have to do that. You could throw it in there in a lump. But what you wanna do is cover that with flour. Now there are tools that you can do this with in a mechanical way. There's a pastry blender that can be fitted onto a uh, Hobart mixer. I think there's even one for the KitchenAid mixer. Uh, other types of mixer would have them as well. And if I were doing a larger batch, I definitely want to have one of those and do this in a mixer. But since this is a relatively small batch, I'm just going to do this by hand. And honestly, I like my hands for doing this job because I can feel the lumps that are in there. I can see how much. I've done, I can look for any big lumps versus little lumps, and with like a pastry blender and such, you really can't do that. Now, since I've got it busted down, I can start in with my good technique. Just take your thumbs, smash and smear. A particle of, fla of fat flattened, coated with flour, flattened and bake is called a what? That's right, a flake. Remember those, those terms you yeah. have? Uh, blind baking, yeah, I teach lecture too. They let me do that. Um, so we're going to work that in. Now there's two basic types of pie dough. What are they? Uh, mealy and flaky. Very good. Mealy and flaky. And what's the difference? Mealy is um, lots of it more. So bigger chunks of fat and flaky than in mealy. In mealy, I work the fat in until it's almost evenly combined. And the purpose there is, what's the use for uh, flaky pie dough? What are the applications for flaky pie dough? Anybody know? Top, top, of, top of double crust pies and the bottom of single or er, bottom of blind baked pies. 
So if you're going to blind bake this shell, use a flaky pie dough. Give you a nice flaky crust on the bottom for your cream pies, your chiffon pies, things like that. Um, the reason for that is if I leave those big fat chunks in there and use it as the bottom crust on a, on a baked pie, a pie that's going to be baked with the filling and the shell, that fat can melt away and create an avenue for the filling to get between the pie shell and the pan. And if that happens, you're not baking that pie shell anymore, you're poaching it. And that's not delicious. So I'm going to get it down to about here. I do want some lumps of fat, but not too many. So it's a good bit of work, and you can see my flowers change color. Now it's kind of yellow. Got a couple of big ones in there, so I'm gonna work it just a little bit more. This is about the, the biggest batch I'd wanna do by hand. You could do more, but you're kinda using your time unwise. The machine would be a lot faster at this. You can even use your paddle attachment to do this, but you wanna be careful because it is possible to work all that fat into all that flour and turn it into Berman A. Remember that from Skills? thickening agent, a raw root thickening agent. All right, right before I add my liquid with all of my other ingredients, I want to stir it really well. Make sure I get the last of that sugar sludge and salt suspended or dissolved in there. If it isn't dissolved, then at least it'll be suspended. But this is going to be flavored really well with that milk powder and the salt and the sugar. And we're all in. I don't second guess my water. If you've got a formula you don't trust, get a new formula. Now, I don't want to get in there with my hands and work, or I'm going to get the fat fingers, because there's water, and there's flour and fat, and that's going to stick to me. I'm going to use a tool instead, and I like my bowl scraper for this. Your rubber spatula will do a good job as well. Bowl scrapers are dead useful. I call them the very best tool for a baker there is. There's about 300 uses for a bowl scraper. You should definitely have a couple of those in your kit. And you can engrave those with your initials too because those are stolen items. All right, as soon as this becomes a lost cause, all that moisture starts getting soaked up and all that flour and all that fat, I'm gonna take it to the table and I'm gonna lightly knead it together. Now I wanna underdevelop this a lot. Can I borrow somebody's scale, please? I forgot to set up one of those, but I am gonna need a scale. I'm gonna scale out my pie dough units. I wanna know how much pie dough I'm using every time because then I know how to cost it. Notice too that as I've worked, I've tightened up my containers. So my uh, Mies containers are all in a nice pile. They're not scattered all over the place, taking up room. Work smart. Work smarter, not harder. Work this dough together. Just a light knead. We want to underdevelop it. It's going to sit in the cooler and it's going to cool down quite a bit. Okay, there it is. I want it so that it's going to break up a little bit, but I don't want it. Uh, smooth. So now I'm going to scale these out to 10 ounce units because that's about what it takes to fill a pie pan. I think it's a 9 inch pie pan we use. One. Two. going to do with all this, all this leftover pie dough laying here? Are we going to make a little baby pie with it? God, no. I can't sell that. But what I can do is chip that into these four right here. So take that and work it in just a little bit. And we're going to patty this up, almost like you're making a hamburger patty. You want to flatten round. Why round? Because that's the shape we're going to roll it into to fill our pie pan. Why flat? Because flat makes it cool more rapidly all the way through to the center. And that's what you want. We're going to stick them in the cooler. After we put them in the Mies bag, lay them out two by two. Every time we're going to grab a little of this excess. We're going to work it into a round and lay it in the Mies bag. Same thing here. And let this dough chill about 30 minutes minimum. You want to relax the gluten. You're also going to continue the development of the structure of the gluten throughout the dough without agitation. Just resting, you'll develop gluten. Get a little bit more of the scrap. Everybody gets a little heavy, but nobody gets too heavy. And I don't have that one little piece, and God forbid I should throw that away. No place in the trash for food, period. 
You got food in your trash, you are buying too much food. Take all that, throw that in there. I'll use it. Okay, we're gonna wrap this under, we'll put it on a sheet pan, pick, take a piece of tape and write our name on it, put that on there. Don't ever write directly on plastic, sometimes that'll bleed through the plastic and onto the product. If the customer sees that, I swear to God, it's black mold, and they are so allergic to black mold, they will die if they eat it. Doesn't matter how many times you explain to them, no, that's Sharpie, it's a marker, it's non tough No, that's black mold, I know it when I see it. So just don't run into that problem. Write on tape and then stick it to the bag. Any questions? All right, make me some pie dough. Just